before we have a 10 minutes break, I raise up a kind of a question. To be or not to be, that is the question. To be in market system, you must go in short. Allow market to play important role. So not to be means that you need to use the government's hands to do going long. So if you ask some international organization to send their specialist, organized a kind of group to help you, they may give you advice. You should understand what is market system. You need to follow the market system. So most of the developing country, when they're facing the challenge of the crisis, they do the going short. Almost all of them failed. So Chinese government at that time, in 1949 to 1950, the governments finally make a decision. They adopt a measure for going long. They calculate how much they need. You know that time is very very important structure. The total amount of the population in cities only twelve percent, and almost half of these twelve percent separated in small towns and county towns. That is not a problem because the county town and the and the and the rural town can be easier to come to to supply the agricultural products. They don't need, and also there is no such kind of speculation. So the risk not come from the lower, small city, county town, no. The risk only created by several big cities, or mega cities like Shanghai. So Shanghai is the center of the private capital. So the governments need to fight the major Anime, not in this uh, local town and the county town and the small cities, but the uh, main anime only allocated in Shanghai or Tianjin or Wuhan, several central city, mega city, and you need to pay attention to another events. Almost all these. Uh, Revolutionary army controlled big city have the similar phenomena. Almost all of these private businessmen do the same thing in big cities. Even they don't have political party. Even at that time, they are not easy to communicate. They all do the same things. Means what? Means regulation. What is regulation? Okay, it's easy to understand. If you facing the big inflation means that any businessman want to invest into the physical production will be big loss. So at that time, when the high inflation happened, almost all the businessmen want to take the currency out of the physical production, run the stock markets or the wholesale markets, whatever, that's a random speculations. Means that even you set up your political aim for develop the national capitalism, that time is not a not applied time, not the right time. Mm -hmm. So the government finally made the decision going long means that issue more paper money, the paper currency, issue more. And then the governments mobilize the local people in countryside, join the land revolution to redistribute all the land to every households. Remember, at that time, 
88% of the total population in China is countryside people, peasants. So if you can mobilize almost 90%, 88% of the population drawing the land erosion means that almost the whole country was mobilized by the party, by the ruling party. And then you can take, you can ask them, you have taken the land reform as an outcome, uh, and then you have a land. Now the governments want you to contribute the, the agricultural products to the governments, only to the governments, not to the private sector. Certainly, these uh, peasants, when they take the land by the ruling party revolution, certainly they would like to contribute the agricultural products. And what does the city need? Rice, the food. So if you can organize this scattered village to give you the, 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 the food, the grain, means that you have enough physical properties. Grain is a physical properties. Based on these physical properties, means the more they do the investment in the rice markets or green markets, to make the price high means that the more your physical properties become bigger. If you calculate the, 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 the volume by the currency, okay, the currency becomes inflation, means that your, your food, your storage become more high volume, means that you can give more, you can issue more paper money. Understand me? That is a kind of cycle to take more physical grain, physical products. And then these are private investments. Do a lot of investments to make the price high. Means that your storage, the volume increased. Understand me? Based on that, based on how much controlled by your governments, you can, your governments also can issue more paper money. Finally, just one year or several months later, the central governments found, okay, the total amount of the reserve, or of the storage, equal of the total amount of the currency they issued. That is 1940s, 1950. 1949, they're facing the challenge of very high inflation, but 1950, they found, okay, they can stabilize the whole markets in the cities. No matter how much you invest, you want to stir up the price, you want to make the price uprising, okay, finally, you lose. These are private investments, all loss. So that is why we said the land reform contribute the, the revolutionary revenue. And then this revolutionary re revenue is an institutional returns taken by the central governments, help for solving the problem of high inflation, and also help to solve this uh, attack from the private investments. It's amazing. So the governments take the responsibility to going long means that you against the market system, but finally you win the battle. Not only that, if only you have a, a, a hands to organize the peasants to contribute their food, their, their green products, and then you have also another side, you issue the paper money, and then to make them to balance. That is one thing, it's a, it's a game. Another thing is also very interesting. One, the governments cannot deal with this, uh, this uh, very high inflation, this, uh, especially speculations. Because the silver, many hundred years, as said from the 15th century, taken by the not upper grade, not upper uh, class, but also low class, all people want to have a silver. So it means that if you fight silver in speculation, fight silver investments means they fight people. But how can you deal with such kind of problem? And if they don't do that, means that you cannot use the, the authority uh, issue this money, means that your 
sovereignty currency, your sovereignty financial system will be destroyed. So it means that you need to protect your sovereignty currency system. I said, I compared the, the old governments. I said, KMD governments failed when they issued the, the authority currency. That is a legal currency. They failed in 1930s. In the end, they cannot deal with the high inflation. When they invite American specialists, professors, and the government officials, help them to have a kind of uh, deepening financial reform program, four months, second fail. The big failures. These uh, governments just uh, follow these uh, Western uh, ideologies. This new governments also claim national capitalism. But when they're facing, that's the, the first fight, when they're facing the challenge of the econo economic crisis, they must win this battle. And then they can strengthen their authorities. They can strengthen their, their sovereignty. So that is a dependence on or independence for this new country. You have a hundred years fight. Finally, they take this power to be the authority, the new authority. So what they use their authority is also very important. So they directly use the army to shut down the stock markets, the silver markets. And then announced, very publicly announced, any speculation is illegal. Anybody can report it, can report such kind of behavior, and then capture them, to send to jail, immediately. Because this is a, it's a, it's big money, but no, it's big army. They directly use the army men. Because at that time, Shanghai is a military controlled, uh, military committee replace the, the Shanghai governments. So military committee can use military. That is very special treatment. So they directly use the army, PLA, surround all the, the stock markets and all the wholesale markets, whatever, stopped. And then these are businessmen captured. And every people need to pass the exams. If you have a, no such kind of bad things, you can go release. If you have bad things, put in jail. Just uh, several days, nobody can do the speculation. So it means that governments, if you do want to have independence, you need to use very special treatment. That is uh, the experience at that time. So the critical issue at that time, is that you mobilize the largest population to join such kind of institutional change. That is a land re re reform or land revolution. Land reform after land revolution. Land revolution means that peasants join the, the fightings. Land reform means that when you take the power, you set up the governments, give them the rights. Every village, they have the rights to redistribute land for every household, free, no pay. So no pay means that almost all people think that it's a big chance for me to have a property, no pay. That is why the revolution means that peasants fight for the tailor's rights. But that tailor's rights is not communism. It's historically almost all different generation, different dynamics, dynasties, different dynasties. All peasants want to have a tailor rights. So that is not ideological communism. It's a long history phenomenon, long history institution. So people familiar with tailor rights, so it's more easier to mobilize peasants to have tailor rights. Even they don't think that it's communism, they think, okay, it's a new emperor, 
take the seats in Beijing now give us a new priority we can distribute land for every household that is agriculture society and when these uh, people uh, do have their lands certainly they will invest more labor mm. and then have a more high yield annually so from 1947 when they start redistributing land to old peasant households, the agriculture increased. From 1950, when they finish the land reform, okay, so the annual yield grow up more faster. So means that they can surplus, they can take the surplus to supply the city needs, and then there will be a stability in the cities and the cost of buy whole people join the peasants revolution almost all people want to have a land free so not only male but also female almost all the aging people even the the, the aging aging people and the, and the, and the least the teenage all join the mobilization so that is a you can see that it's a a nationwide, almost the whole population joined the national state building. Means the people mobilized very wide. If you go to any advanced country, people have a no such kind of mobilization. Means majority joined the mobilization. Means that state building joined by the majority. So that is China. So 1949, 1950, they did facing a big challenge of the crisis comprehensively, but they use typical Chinese way to solve the crisis and also build up city building space, the base for the city building. Mm -hmm. Means majority join the state building as a kind of political actions. So it's quite important to understand. Mm -hmm. So you can also see that this uh, this uh, 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 picture to show us almost all of the East Asian area, including Japan, Korea, Chinese, um, Taiwan or mainland China, and even Vietnam, all a Confucian culture area. All have the same thing. No matter whatever isms they claim, but they have one thing the same, equal distribution land to every tailor's households. So that is uh, almost all of these uh, areas finish the mobilization to the majority. So all majority contribute their efforts to make this East Asian area all finish industrialization. So the equal rights of the whole people for what? For mobilization. And the mobilization for what? For industrialization. And these countries' industrialization have no such kind of very blood exploitation. Take other countries' people as the slaves. Take other countries' resources as your properties. These countries, except Japan, did something in the history. Others, no chance. But others all finish deindustrialization. That is so called East Asian miracle. When we have this, this uh, uh, land reform experiences, we summarize as a kind of East Asian tradition, we can compare with the West mod model. Mm -hmm. So, only East Asian area have historical phenomena equal rise to all tailors' households. But other areas, like Latin American countries, South Asia countries, African countries, all follow the West model. No one succeeded. So that is a base, base, basic difference. Nowadays here, when I almost 
try to uh, show my uh, special feelings to these uh, developing countries, brothers and sisters. Why does you only follow this uh, West model? You know little about East model. You know little about East Asia. So let me give you my words. Come to learn what is the East model. Don't follow the West model. That is not your model. Okay, so when we give this uh, a model, we need also talk some details. The first, the Chinese ruling party never been the follower of the West-centric philosophy and West-centric ideology. In the revolutionary history, they got so many bad comments from the ideology controlled by the Soviet Union. But they believe that from the yellow soil plateau, they can make the local Marxism. And when they win the fighting to, took, to take the power, they also have their own way for setting up their industries, not like the West Bay or Soviet Union Bay. Mm -hmm. So when they carry out the land reform, mm -hmm. they also have their details, means that they can stand or they can allow different natural village have a different land properties. Some village have rich land resources. Every household can have a, maybe two times, even three times land. Then it's a poor village. But rich village, land only belong to rich village. Poor village, you have a short land, very short land, okay. You're short of the natural resources, nobody can give you subsidies. You become poor. So some poor village finally going to do some big efforts to, uh, to reform the land. Like that, like Da Zhai. Mm. They are in poor mountain area. They have very little land resources. And then finally, because they don't have enough land, so they use their labor to develop new land and to develop new water resources. And then they enlarge their land in the mountain area to find the wasteland, to find the hillside land and the mountain land, and then to tailor it, tailor it, tailor it this, uh, this uh, mountain land, this hillside land, and then to enlarge their village natural resources. So we do have so many later efforts. It's because of the, 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 the rich became, rich still be rich, and the poor still be poor. Not, it's not the public ownership. Not the whole country have a one standard. And the, and the natural village is a small one. From the 1949 until now, we still insist the land property rights belong to natural village, not belong to the big one. Certainly later, some organization enlarged, like Zhou Jiazhuang People's Commune. They took the tractors sponsored by governments. Tractor need big land, so they organized different natural resources into one people's commune for utilize the tractor. Because tractor given by the governments, so they can have a free machine to use for agri agricultural production. So that is why the people easier to mobilize. Okay, if we join this big uh, uh, cooperative, we may enjoy the tractor. That is, uh, the, the local people said, okay, why not? We can have a tractor, others don't have, we have. Okay, they set up the first people's commune in 1957, and 1953, 
It's because 1952, China start to produce the tractor, a big one. That's from Stalin uh, styles. So this big tractor could hardly be accepted by the small natural village. So that means they need to have a big organization. So that is a special case. But most of this uh, rural area still maintain the natural village ownership. This one also very interesting because that if the village maintain the land ownership, means all of the households as a member of the village have the equal rights of the membership rights. This is a very complicated rights system. Western economics, talking about institutional e economics, they talk about the property rights. They said property rights is a kind of group rights. But they never do the research on Chinese land reform, contribute a new style. Means that the village have the rights, but the village rights joined by different households. Means village rights not is not uh, absolutely rights. Village rights only based on every household can be a uh, uh, visible rights. It means it's, a, it's amazing mechanism inside. Means that you cannot kick out any household. Any households have equal rights. And inside the households, any member have equal rights, no matter you're a girl or boy. Understand me? So if you go to Japan, Japan is uh, the, 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 the eldest took the whole the land properties. If you go to Europe, the same. But if you're China, no. Same, same, I mean equal. All the members, all the children have the equal rights. All the households have equal rights in the village. All the members have the equal rights in the family. Means what? Means no family members can be kicked out. No households can be kicked out. That is a equality. That is not public. So it's typical uh, Oriental model, it's the East Asian model in China, turn to the Chinese model means that the basic rights is property rights. The basic property rights is structural. Partially belong to the village, partially belong to households, partially belong to the family members. So that is uh, in, in the Western social science, people cannot do the analysis, they cannot think that it's a very a clear right. They said, okay, you, you need to be a privatization. But if you think that it's a, every member of the family have the equal rights, it's originally, it's a private sector, it's a private ownership. But not a Western style, it's a typical Oriental style. And then you found, okay, why that China can f faster to set up industrialization. Why these uh, laborers can directly set up the, the, the workshops, the, the factories only in the village? It's because just such kind of property rights, structural property rights, they create the mechanism. It's a rational households and the rational village. Or we can see that it's a village rationality or household rationality. What is that? Because no households can be laid off by village. All households have the same equal rights as membership. Means that when you set up the fa factory in the village, every household wants to draw into share the benefits. So you only can do take jobs. And uh, so means that others, if they, they have no chance to go to the workshop, they work in the field, they work in, in the field, okay, in agriculture. 
they have an equal income, equal credit. That means the village take even more bigger surplus from the village industry. So they are very faster to pass the primitive accumulation. Nobody complain. These are laborers working in the workshop. Okay, they, if you are in the market system, you need to take more salary than the labor working in the, in the agriculture. But they got to take less than the agriculture labor. Means that industrial labor have a less income than the agriculture labor. So means that industrial labor contribute more surplus to the village. And then when they take this, uh, nobody complain because that's equal distribute. Sharing by all the households. That is uh, very interesting. That's why when in the beginning of the 1980s, when China ran into the local industrialization, a lot of village start their village industries. It's because they have such kind of mechanism. And then if you go to the households, that is household rationality. Household rationality means what? Means that, okay, in households, you have a, the division, the different uh, uh, works. The young labor may have some kind of cash income. And the, the old generation may have a less cash income, but they work in the agriculture. What's the function of this, uh, these people in agriculture? They produce not only the food, they produce safety. All family, the safety is a food safety. Maybe the father working in the agriculture to give the whole safety to the family. And the young son or daughter go to take some cash income. That is for the, the, the family sustainability. So means that they have a comprehensive interest. Not for individual, but for whole family. So means that family still is a kind of is a, is a kind of zero risk model of the family. So when we have such kind of Chinese styles land revolution, we found that there are so many mechanisms good for industrialization. Not only good for central industrialization, but also good for the local industrialization, and also good for village industrialization. So this uh, land reform can have uh, many outcome. So let me just uh, try to uh, uh, tell this, uh, this uh, uh, developing country scholar, if you do the details research to notice what is a real mechanism in Chinese land reform, you may learn a lot. Maybe you can take something back to your country. So that's, uh, that is why we've put this picture here to show that how the land reform and the rural system well to industrialization. It's much better than others. So that is why China can, can realize the industrialization is because of the, the land reform. Land reform means that the state still can have the chance to step in to enter the land resources redistribution. Mm -hmm. So the land reform happened in 1949, but later, mm, in the later part of the 20th century, Chinese governments have a three times redistributed land to the rural people. And every time they solve the big problem. So that we can have a more explanation later. Okay, so here, let's um, give you a detailed story about how this uh, uh, sovereignty currency system fight with uh, the old government's current system and the silver system. Just now we have a, give, uh, a very roughly 
picture to talk about such kind of uh, uh, procedure. Now it's in detail. 1949, in May, Shanghai liberalized. Immediately, next month, there is a currency fighting. The military committee gave order all the uh, US dollar gold notes abandoned. You can give to the governments how much can have a one new currency. This is more easy because as I said, KMD governments, US dollar notes has been no any credit. Has been failed. So people would like to give, the, give up such kind of valueless currency. But when the governments want the local people can give back, the, contribute their gold and silver, that will be more difficult. Nobody wants to give it to you. So the real fighting is that the new authority currency fight the silver system. KMD governments failed. This new government succeeded. And they, want, they, they, they used the market, market way, failed. And then they got to use the military way and got to use this strong control and close the silver markets. And then enforce the market, the businessmen accept the new currency. But there is still have to know some detailed measures. The critical measure is that three measures. One is, is that the salary calculated only by million. You may know that the, the, the liberation, another name is a limit plus raffle. Xiaomi Jia Bu Qiang. So limit in the guerrilla controlled area. Long termly is the base for calculate the price. If you want to buy a shoes, they will say that it's a how many kilos of miller can ch change a shoes. If you want to buy a cap, they also say that it's a how much millet. So they do have such kind of behavior. So when they occupy the big cities, that they took the power. All the officials, the government officials, all the uh, school teachers, the public servants, all calculated by minute. Even the Chairman Mao himself calculated him uh, annually he can have uh, 12,000 jin means that 6,000 kilo yeah, annual income of Chairman Mao is 6,000 kilo and uh, Zhou Enlai, less than Mao, maybe 5,000 kilo. <laughs> calculated by the... But if you think this is it's strange, no. Going back to the whole of this uh, history, uh, any dynasty, the emperor gave these, uh, these officials also how many dan. You, you have a what kind of position? This position equal how many grain? So that is a, when you fight the silver system, you can not only use your new measures. We set up a money system. It's modern one. But this money system 
based on what? Based on the physical products calculation. So we said zhe shi, take the money back to the physical products. That is made it. So it's a long-term history. Long history gave you the experiences. You, you, you are not only use the revolutionary measures, you, only, you also use the historical measures. The emperor gave the, these officials, calculates how much they should have, gave them how many uh, kilos of the grain. Now calculate, because it's from the, the, the yellow soil plateau, the, the central party committee allocated in the yellow soil plateau, the, the main products of grain is a millet. So they calculate by millet. And then not, car, not income, how much salary you have, calculated how much kilos, millet you have. And also the government's death when turned to the bonds, the government's bonds also calculated into the millet. So the governments not only gave you the money, gave you the salary by minute, also governments issued bonds by minute. And then the most critical issue is that the bank, when you put your savings into bank, they calculate how much minute. When you withdraw, you take the money back, they also calculate nowadays, three days, what is the price of minute. And then you can have how much currency you take back. So this is a very clever way. Means that immediately, whenever you have not only the bonds, but also the salary, but also the currency, all are stabilized. When you want to set up, you want to fight the, the currency crisis. By what? By you from, from the peasant party. You from rural revolution. You from passenger revolution, you from land revolution. What is the outcome of land revolution? Millet. The green. And then the green can be the calculation, can be the base, the basic standard for anything calculation. So the first step mm -hmm, of this, uh, this, uh, this new authority, this sovereignty currency system. That is smart enough to set up this uh, key economic sovereignty. So I said it's uh, very important for any country, any people. You may know that it's uh, not easy to have such kind of uh, measures. But these measures, you also can think it's uh, also easy. You think it's, it's not, not easy, but you, if you know the history, you will know that it's easy because in the history, agricultural country have a long-term such kind of calculations. So most of these Western-centric philosophy or Western-centric ideologies, they think that is communism. But in our analysis, we think that it's historical issues. They repeat the historical experiences, and then they stabilize their economy. So similar as almost any dynasties. Just go back to the history. You can find almost all the dynasties. When they took the power, the new emperor took the power, do the same things first, equal this real land to every household, tailorize. And then tailors, these households, contribute to whatever they have, facilitize this new, new emperor. Uh -huh. And then the new emperor gave his uh, staff, his officials, by what? By the agricultural products. So, let me come make a, 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 a conclusion. We can see that it's a new authority. Use, nominally, use the revolution as the measure to reset up the basic economic uh, relations, that is the equal distribution land. And then set up a very stable institution system with vivid, with a very workable mechanism. Mm 
to show enough rationality, that is valid rationality, and also the household rationality. Based on these rationalities, you can have a government's rationality. Government's rationality is that is going long, not going short. Avoid the market failures. Mm -hmm. So it means when they have the physical product standardized, means that whatever you have as a kind of currency, no matter it's a bank uh, business or the government bonds business or even the salaries, all can based on the calculation of the limit, the, of the, the limit, millet. I have to meet it. Yes. So that is a you you you, you think it's a, it's a, it's an amazing system, but it's historically not extremely new. But in name of the communism, but indeed is that we use the traditional historical experiences to deal with the modern crisis. So from that time. It means that China succeeded to deal with the high inflation. But then, what happened? What followed? You can do the research to any crisis when they finish the fighting with the inflation, followed by depression. That is an international regulation. No one can jump out. So the same, when the 49 to beginning of the 50, new authority in China, new governments in China succeeded in fighting the inflation and then immediately falling into the depression. Because these are businessmen, this private sector, have no money. They were failed. They have no money to invest. And then also the markets no need, no demand. So that means that they don't have a, any activity to draw in the investments. So from the, the later 1950s, the Chinese economy, after high inflation, down to the depression. So at that time, governments also want to solve the problems. So they are trying to use the market system to buy these uh, private products by the governments means that governments have the, 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 to be the big buyer mm -hmm. to create the market, to create market needs. But all of this market system failed until Korean War. Korean War happened just on time. When the Chinese economy down to the depression, June 1950, Korean War happened. This summer, immediately create large demand of the war. So the war create demand. And then in the later 1950, October, Chinese army joined the Korean War. The war demand became larger and larger. So the economic uh, uh, grow up. The economy grow up. So this uh, 49, you have a bad, bad inflation. And then you deal with the inflation. And then 50 later, you decreased. And then the, the war happened. And then demand increased. And then the economic grow up. So that is a cyclical crisis. And also by uh, Soviet Union facilitized the Korean War, transfer a lot of heavy industries, machinery industries from Soviet Union into the into the northeast of China and the north China. So they own all of these uh, big factories need to have an uh, infrastructure construction. So at that time, from 1951, when Soviet Union invested into China. China need a lot of laborers from the countryside 
to this uh, industrial base for the infrastructure construction. So that also created large demand of the grain, of the commercial goods, of the, these, uh, these light industrial products and the textile products, in that, uh, products. So the whole uh, demand to make the markets grow up. That is a uh, uh, high growth. So from 1951, China turned to the high growth. So 49 and then 50 and then 51, that is a very beautiful curve to show cyclical crisis. So that is a, that's a, the first crisis, first cyclical crisis happened in China. And then one after another, from the whole of the Mao's time, from the beginning of the 1950s, we have a many times up and down, up and down. So that is a, a, the crisis regulation in Chinese industrialization. So we will give the more explanation in details next lecture. So hope you can have the major uh, 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 point of uh, the lecture. The first is that I emphasize the land reform revenue. I mean the institutional returns come from the land reform. I have uh, gave the explanation. I don't need to repeat. Then the, this one can have a new mechanism that is the internalization. All of the industrialization, no matter what, whatever ism you claim, you all have externalities. Externalities can be internalized. Only have right mechanism, you can internalize the externalities. If you have not right mechanism, you cannot internalize the mechanism, uh, uh, the, uh, you internalize the externalities. The externalities always turn to the risk. The risk always turn to the crisis. So that is uh, very important. So in China, only re relying on the land village ownership Households use the right system. You can set up the mechanism for internalize the externalities. That is one part of my conclusion. Second part of my conclusion, that is a government rationality. Most of these economists would like to emphasize the private rationality. But here, people must pay attention, especially the developing countries. People should notice the government rationality is even more important, especially when you're facing the challenge of the crisis. Because the crisis happened, only one uh, uh, organization, that is governments, can do going long. The private only can do going short. So going long can help you to solve the problem of the crisis. Going short only follow the crisis to make the crisis even more severe. And then you take the cost. So we can very uh, emphasize the governments do going long is a uh, very important contents of the government's rationality. No matter it's local and the central. Okay, let me finish here. Hope you have a good day. <laughs>